Hi everyone, my name's Spencer and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be setting up a new bullet journal, but before we get into that, let's have a look at my previous one. So in January, I did a Stray Kids The View theme, and I love this. This was my first time using the Archer and Olive paint pens, which I did struggle with. If you watch the video, you'll see. But it was still a lot of fun to make, and I love how it came out. I did a Carpe Diem theme, so uh, very punny. It was a koi fish, koi pond theme, and again, love this so much. Mark, I did a kawaii cat cafe theme. I didn't get to show you the setup for this one because I believe the footage just got completely corrupted. Uh, in April, I did an urban spring theme. I really don't know how to describe this one well, but basically I did cityscapes combining with the arrival of spring. May, I did a doll's house theme. Again, I didn't get to show you this one, because I got COVID and then I had like a crisis of confidence so yeah I didn't end up uploading that one but I am still really proud of how it came out particularly the Dutch door cover that I made. In June I did a space cat theme. This one is so much fun. I really love this theme. It was inspired by Sam Ryder's Eurovision performance which I also absolutely love. July was a special one for me. This was the month I did my tribute to Kazuki Takahashi who is the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! He passed away on the 4th of July this year so this one was really special and my last theme was a Stray Kids Kazoo theme and I didn't mean all my journal to start and end with a Stray Kids theme and that August is the eighth month and eight is fate if you know you know. So now it is time to bid farewell to this journal and to say hello to our new baby. This is the Matcha Theme Notebook from Notebook Therapy. I absolutely love their journals and apparently I paused recording here probably to set up or do something noisy and forgot to resume again so I'm sorry I don't have footage for how I set up these two pages but I'll go over them really quickly now. So on the left hand side I have my grid spacing guide. I showed you in the flip through I do have one that is completely removable and these journals are exactly the same size so I'm going to continue using that removable one because I've loved it it's been so helpful but I do occasionally leave it behind if I forget to put it back into its little wallet so I'm putting a permanent one in the front of this journal just for a backup. I tried to keep it really simple so that it would be easy to recreate or just show you some really beginner friendly ideas. I decided to stick with the same front of Boudreaux theme, the seasons theme that I did in my previous journal, just to kind of keep them tied together as well. Um, but I also made some changes and hopefully some improvements to it. For my cover page, I decided to draw some like washi tape designs. And these are similar to the designs that I made in my journal last year with a few extra bits to them as well. I changed out the umbrella for just raindrops. I added flowers and leaves as well. I really wanna make these designs into actual washi tapes or stickers. So that is something I'm working on at the moment. There will hopefully be some updates soon on that. I tried to make it look like a scrapbooking effect but with everything being drawn so hopefully it's accessible that you don't need to have these set washi tapes or whatever. I'm showing you how you can draw them yourself and you can change up the doodles to whatever you want or use a stencil like I did for the clown. I used the Notebook Therapy bullet journal stencils and these are great if you are nervous about drawing or you're not sure how to set up certain tables or things like that, certain trackers, these are really helpful for that. So I really recommend getting them and you can use them in a bunch of creative ways. So I'll try and show you that as well. So these are the basic elements that I will be taking on through the rest of this setup. So because this journal is only gonna be used for a couple of months, I tend to get more experimental because I have the space to do it. So that's why there's kind of like extra pages, different layouts and that sort of thing throughout this setup. And that will continue into my monthly setups as well. My next page is titled Achieved So Far in 2022. Often we get so focused on what we want to do next, what our goals are, how to reach them and that sort of thing, that we forget to appreciate what we have already done and what we have already achieved because we're always moving on to the next thing. So I wanted to start this journal with some positivity and start by reflecting on what I have actually achieved this year already. And that's bound to be way more than I think. Often times when you're asked, oh, what have you done this year? You kind of forget everything you've done, but I'm gonna write it down so I can like physically see everything that I've done. And hopefully that will be good for me to look at on like bad mental health days or when I'm feeling demotivated, just to remind me that I've already achieved a lot. And this can be small wins, big wins, whatever. If it's a win, it's going on the page. So something else that I've carried on from the previous journal is using this bubble font. I tried to keep 
the spacing of the letters even, but I did colour them in randomly with my colour palette, just trying to be careful not to put the same colour like too close together. And I used the super tips for this. And throughout the setup, you'll see I keep experimenting with how I do the headings. So I'm going to show you a bunch of ways you can do it, but still have them look cohesive because the colour palette is the same throughout. I also drew the washi tapes again, and I also experiment with how I colour these. So which ones have a blue background, which ones are left white, that sort of thing. On the previous page, I gave some of these washi tapes a grey background, but I didn't like that so much. So I dropped it and tried other things moving forwards. And you can see I'm using those stencils to create things like banners and some of the doodles in the washi tape. So for my next pages, I decided to set up a future log. I didn't have one of these in my previous journal, just a year at a glance, which was fine. It worked brilliantly for whenever I was referencing it to set up a monthly or anything like that. And I mostly just use my phone for a future log. But for this journal, but I wanted somewhere to make notes for future things in my journal too, so not just in my phone. And also things feel more flexible when they're in my journal and like when something's in my phone it feels very set in stone. It doesn't work when you're doing things with flexible deadlines and that sort of thing. So this particular future log is focused on the projects that I want to do each month. So I know when to start on things to get them done for the deadline. And there's also a space for eventu. As you can see I do all of the black line work first. So I outline all of my elements and then I go in with colour afterwards. And I repeated that bubble font again. However I'm going to colour it differently on this page which you'll see in a minute. I put the doodles that are on the washi tapes I've made in the corners to kind of frame the page and I also added some under the title just to break it up and highlight that part as well. I did not want to write out a bunch of dates really small. I was not going to do mini calendars on this page. They can be really helpful and brilliant for a lot of things but for me because I was using this more as a notes section I didn't need every single date of the month on there. So instead I doodled some grid paper and and wrote the name of the month on there as the header. To kind of help with the scrapbooking theme as well, I added a drop shadow to the graph paper sections as well. So for the headings that you can see me writing out underneath each of the month, we have a section for projects and a section for events. Because I gave some of the graph paper like stick-in doodles a grey drop shadow and others I gave a coloured one just to try and make it more colourful and more engaging to look at. I find if there's too much grey, I just shut off. So I needed some extra colour on there. And here you can see me colouring in that title but instead of like colouring in the lines I've done almost a drop shadow in different colours for each letter and I really love how this came out. I will definitely be doing this in the future. I've done it before in different setups but for some reason it just really worked with this one. I'm really happy with how it came out. And again I played around with which of the washi tape designs would have the white background and which ones would have the blue. Because on the leaf one I've drawn little like wind swirls in light blue, I decided that one would have the white background this time. So my next page I did make a goals page and I split this into personal and business. Again, I did that graph paper design, but instead of using the grey or fine liners, I used the super tips again. So we have one that is this orange colour and one that is green, but I did put in the grey drop shadow just to keep that colour kind of consistent throughout. And this time like, I didn't colour the headings in in any way, I just left them white because I thought that helped them stand out against the busier graph paper background. For the goals heading for this page, I didn't want it to be like in your face. So again, taking something from my previous bullet journal setup, I decided to add in these little circles that kind of replicate the notebook therapy stickers you can get. They usually come on like a washi tape roll and the little circle ones, they're really cute. So I decided to try and make that and I put the word goals in there with leaf designs and flower designs as well, just to kind of make it look more decorative than these are your goals, these are what you should be doing. I'm gonna make it a little bit more laid back and casual because I do not respond well to being told what to do. And because there was already quite a lot of colour on this page, I for the washi tapes that I drew in the corner, I left them uncoloured and just did the outline of the doodles in grey. I can't decide whether or not I like this and it will stay like this or if I will go back and colouring them later but for now this is what I've done. So under each heading I have a table written in the same colour as the heading so I know which one's which. I know that sounds silly but 
when you have so many spreads and they go across different pages, uh, like you'll see in a minute, it's good to have some way of keeping information together. So I use color coding, it's my favorite way to do that. So yeah, the tables have space for me to write the step towards my goal, when I started it and when I finished it. And this is kind of to help me keep track of how long different things take me. That being said, sometimes I'll start something on one day and it is literally like a day job, but I get distracted and don't come back to it for a week. I will still write that it took me a week, but I'll add a little note somewhere saying like, cause I procrastinated. So I have that for either side. And under the headings, you can see I'm also adding in this blue box. This is a place for me to write a statement that's gonna help me narrow down and focus on specific things that I want to achieve in my personal life and my business. And then in the table below, I'll write the steps that I need to take to achieve the statement that I've written. So like I said before, Sometimes you don't have enough space on one page or there's just extra notes to make about something and you need a space for that in your journal. So I wanted to build that into this setup. I want my journal to have space to breathe, if you like. So that's why this page isn't titled yet. I'll do that when I get to it and I know what I'm going to use that page for. And again, because I didn't know exactly what this page would be used for, I kept as much white space as possible, but I did want color on there too. So for this one, I switched it up again. And for the washi tapes, instead of choosing ones to have a blue background and having the doodles on them, I just colored them in solidly with like the main color from that design. So we have the blue from the clouds design, the yellow orange from the sun and rain design, the pink from the flower design and the green from the leaf design. I also, once again, took some inspiration from Notebook Therapy. They have these stickers that come on a roll and they're kind of shaped like stamps. So they have kind of a frilly edge and then an image in the middle. And I really like them. I think they're stinking cute. And I use them like every chance I get. So I had a go at drawing one of those here. I think it could be better. I think it's cute, but I think it could be better. I don't think I balanced the colors quite right, but I think it works with the seasonal scrapbooking effect we're trying to go for here. So one last goals page for this setup. This one is a progress page. So this is for me to just kind of journal about how I'm feeling as I'm going through all of these different steps as I'm trying to achieve things. If I change my mind, like maybe I have a new priority and need to shift what I'm working on. And that can all be recorded in this page or the previous one as well. So again, I continued that bubble font on this page as well. I always find if you're trying to make something cohesive, my go-tos are regardless of what the layout is doing, have the same font somewhere on the page and stick to a color theme. That helps things feel really cohesive, even if the designs of the spreads you're doing are really different. For this one, I did the bubble font again on the graph paper, this time using 0 0.05 pen to draw out the graph lines, but outlined the graph paper and the drop shadow in a thicker one so that that stood out more, if that makes sense. And I also copied the color pattern or color order I did on the achieved so far page. I also did the goals head again in those circular stickers with each with a letter in it you know kind of more relaxed so like the focus when you look at this page is the progress on that rather than these are the goals we're doing and like we're always moving towards the next thing no it's progress that's what we're focusing on and for this one i decided to do two little washi tape strips on page with the headings on it. So I drew the washi tape designs again and combined the doodle ones from kind of throughout this setup with the block colored ones from the previous page as this is actually how I would pair them in my journal if I was using actual washi tapes. I tend to layer plain and patterned ones together so I thought I'd replicate that here. Again just experimenting all the time coming up with a new way to do layouts and that sort of thing. On this page I also tried to draw that stamp sticker again. I think it came out much better on this page. I really love how it looked. I think I kind of got the hang of it by now and I simplified what was on it which I think also really helped. So yeah I just layered that over a darker pink and just because I didn't want the pages to feel unbalanced but I wanted 
enough white space to actually journal in. I just put a long strip of the cloud washi tape along the bottom as well. I think the cloud washi tape might be my favourite one that I designed. I did a whole monthly setup based around clouds back in April of 2020, I believe. I'll put the link either in the notes or in the description and you can go check that out if you're interested in more cloud content. On to the next spread. I don't really have a catchy name for this. This is just my things to check out or try page. This is where I can record ideas of things I want to try in my journal. For example, spreads or layout ideas, techniques, anything like that. Anything that maybe I've seen on Pinterest or Instagram. I'm like, oh, I'd love to try that. I can put that down on this page. And I've left, again, left a lot of white space so I can doodle in it as well because I find that helps me remember something better. And then the other side of the page, the life side of the page, is for me to record anything that people recommend to me to check out or try. So that's things to read, watch, games to play, places to visit, that sort of thing. Yeah, I've tried to keep things cohesive by, again, using that big bubble font to write the headings. And this time I coloured the words in solidly in one colour. I seem to really like using the green and yellow to categorise stuff and the pink and blue to decorate. I don't know why I do that, but that's something I've literally just noticed looking at this. And I also added label, um, those are the pink bit of paper that just say things to check out and things to try, just in case I forget what these pages are for, which may sound silly, but I have done that before in the past. And I've just made those look stuck in by adding really tiny washi tape doodles to the corner to make it look like it's stuck down with washi tape. And then of course I had to add in the actual washi tape designs. So for this one we did the pink flowers with a blue background and the sun and rain design on the white background. And again to just try and keep the pages feeling balanced I added a little 2022 grid paper sticking in the top left hand corner just to try and balance things out because it looked a bit empty there beforehand. On to the next page. So this page is a much more traditional brain dump page. So we all love a good brain dump page. They're fabulous things. I love using them. This spread is for everything and anything that doesn't have a home elsewhere. So sometimes it has a doula, things to research, ideas for stickers or art, that sort. Anything that doesn't have a specific home can go here. And I love using these. I use them a lot. So yet again, the bubble heading style. And for this one, I went back to the same color pattern that we had in the previous heading, the one that I liked the order of. And again, this helps just build cohesion. So for this page, I also went back to adding the washi tape across the corner, tying back into the future log that we made, although those were both at the top. These ones are in opposite corners. And for this one, I did the clouds in the top corner and the and the leaves in the bottom hand corner. So they both had the blue elements on them. And then I drew the swirly sun design and the raindrops in the other two corners. Again, it's really important for me to have a lot of blank space to work with on a page like this. So I can sketch and doodle on it, but I can also write on it. I like to have a lot of freedom with these pages. So that's why there's quite a lot of white space here as well. And we're on to the final page of this setup. Again, this one doesn't really have a name. In my head, I'm calling it like my activity logging page, but I think I need a better name for it. Hence why not actually titled yet. But basically for this page, I'm making vertical calendars for the next six months. So that includes the rest of the months of this year and then January and February of next year, because I usually have to plan things a couple months ahead. So I will be planning for January and February when I'm still using this journal, although I won't have set up because I'll plan before I set up like my new journal and the spreads for that one. So each of these vertical calendars are eight dots across and have one dot base in between and then they go down as many as they need for the number of days in that month. And I started all of them on the same level. So the idea for these is that with each day having just one line, I can write very quickly in there what I did that day. So if the focus was editing or filming or socializing or I'm on holiday, I can keep all of that stuff written really simply across these. And that again is just to help me keep track of how long different parts of a project take me to do so I can better schedule them in the future. So this is partly for planning, but mostly for me to look back on and be like, oh, okay, it actually takes me this long to edit a video. I need to start working on them earlier if I want them published here, or like I've taken on a sewing commission. I need extra weeks for the planning because although I can sew it really quickly, I need back and forth and that sort of thing. So 
It's kind of a combination of planning and recording. So for each of these calendars, again, I just chose one of the colors from the palette, but unfortunately my orange Crayola super tip died a death quite dramatically. So I had to switch that one out and use a different one. The pen I used to replace this one, the one that was the best matte, was my Zig Art and Graphic Twin pen. And I think the shade is 042. This is a very new pen to me. I haven't used these before. I'm quite enjoying it. They are very different to the other brush tips I've used, so they're taking a bit of adjustment, but I am enjoying them. So yeah, I added the colour to the heading and the date section and then outlined the rest of the calendar in the colour as well. For the washi tape doodles, I did both of them with the white background because I thought there was a lot of colour on here already in the calendars. And I think when I do the title for this page, when I actually decide on one, I will probably do the bubble writing with the offset colour again, like the kind of colour drop shadow. So I think it's better to have some extra white space there. So I did the leaves with like the blue details in them and then the sun and rain as well. And that's it for this setup. I feel like I went through that really, really quickly. Hopefully you got some inspiration from this and some ideas. So yeah, let's have a little flip through. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button so we can hang out some more. There's nearly 50 of you little subscribbles right now, which absolutely baffles me. And if you made it to the end of this video, please leave a green emoji in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.